Now, let's talk about hemiacetals and acetals as protecting groups, specifically a practical way to do this. Now, you could react it with any alcohol and get the desired outcome. The more common way here is to use ethylene glycol. So this is ethylene, an ethyl, two carbons, with a diol, two H groups. And if we run this particularly under high axis of ethylene glycol, we end up producing the hemiacetal. And this hemiacetal in particular is very stable because it ends up forming a five member ring. So why would we want to do this? Let's say we had this compound here and we want it to produce this complex here. So we want to take our bromine here and we want to replace it with a hydrox with an OH group. Well, if this wasn't here, we would just say we'll run this under sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide is going to displace the bromine to give us that. But if we do this, there's actually a very good likelihood that we'll, we'll end up further deprotoning, deprotonating the OH group, which will turn around and react to give us Sorry, make sure I did show this to you right. Getting this cyclo complex. Now, for something like cyclobutane, you're not as likely to get it, but definitely if you were forming five and six membered rings, you would have the issue of subsequent attack of the alcohol group on this. Now, if instead we ran it with the ethylene glycol first. Sorry. Then we ran it with the sodium hydroxide and then we acidified it. The intermediate reagent here, after the ethylene glycol, is this complex. The OH here is not going to attack the hemiacetal, it's not going to attack the acetyl group, it's going to give us the displacement. They give us this alcohol, and then when we add the H+, we're going to end up with our desired alcohol. So again, the purpose of the ethylene glycol here is to form the acetyl, the acetyl complex, which will be resistant to other reactions we're going to try to run down the road. In this case, I'm talking about trying to use nucleophilic substitution to remove a halogen. But again, this is going to be true of a lot of complexes. Let's say that we had a double bond here. Well, if we want to reduce this double bond, if we do H2PT, we're going to get rid of this double bond, but we're also going to create an alcohol. If we did the hemiacetyl, and with this complex, the H2PT will give us the desired alkane, and then adding the H plus will get us back to where we want to be. So again, it doesn't come up a super lot, I will acknowledge that in this video, but do be aware that if you do want to prevent your aldehydes and ketones from reacting, see the previous video on how we get to it, but you can use ethylene glycol to form the acetyl, and the acetyl there is going to protect your aldehyde ketone groups and ensure that basically they don't play a role in subsequent reactions.